Hello, scholars. To kick off our energy unit, we're going to conduct a lab in which we investigate what nutrients are in our food. As you watch this video, use the information to set up your lab notebook so you're ready to roll in class tomorrow. Let's start with a quick review. As we've seen in earlier units, cells are made of four types of organic molecules. If you look in this picture, we are closing in on a plant cell. And plant cells contain proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Remember that carbohydrates are all about providing energy. For example, starch and glucose store energy. Lipids are for long-term energy storage, but we also find them in the phospholipid bilayer. They're also making up some hormones, such as estrogen and testosterone. Proteins do all sorts of things for cells. They send messages, they transport materials, they provide structure. Uh, you can see proteins in various parts of this plant cell. And finally, nucleic acids contain our genetic code. Now, where do these molecules come from? Well, they come from our food. That's why you have to eat. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is testing foods from different food groups and seeing which molecules are in each type. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use chemical indicators to test for the organic molecules. The first mo uh, indicator we're going to use is burette solution. We saw this in our urinalysis lab. Burette solution will turn purple in the presence of protein. The next indicator we're going to use is called Sudan 3. This solution is tricky. It's normally a dull pink, but in the presence of lipids, it'll turn a nice uh, bright orangey pink. We'll also use glucose test strips, which turn green in the presence of glucose. We use those in our urinalysis lab. And then finally, we're going to use Lugol's solution, which turns black in the presence of starch. So make sure you've got the problem down in your notebook. We are investigating which organic molecules are found in various types of food. Now, since organic molecules are what we are changing, or what we are measuring, this is our dependent variable. And since we're changing the types of food, that's going to be our independent variable. For your hypothesis, make a quick prediction. Here are the foods you're going to be testing. Fish, pasta, fruit juice, vegetable oil, and beans. Make a prediction as to which molecule will be in each. And perhaps a food has more than one type of molecule. Here's how the protocol will work. You're going to be using two spot plates. You're going to put the spot plates side by side, and then you're going to use masking tape to label what is being put into each spot plate. Along the columns of the spot plates, that's where you're going to put the different types of food. The rows of the spot plate are where you will put uh, each particular indicator. So when you're ready to start, the first thing you're going to do is use a clean pipette to add three drops of water to each well in the water column. The water will serve as your control group. It doesn't have any nutrients, so we would expect a negative test result for all of these indicators. And that'll serve as a great basis for comparison when we test the different foods. Next, you're going to use burette solution to test the water for protein. So you will use a clean pipette to add three drops of burette solution to the very first well underneath the water column and then you'll record your results. Next, you're going to use the glucose test strip in the second well in the water column, and you're going to use that to test for glucose. Remember that you need to dip it in quickly and then wait three minutes for the color change to appear. Next, you'll use Sudan 3 in the third well. Please be careful with this solution. It's flammable and uh, it's volatile, so inhaling it is not good for your lungs. You're going to add three drops of that into the third well and record any color changes. And then finally, Lugol's solution will go in the fourth well. Again, three drops of that and then record color changes. You're going to repeat this procedure which, with each of the remaining nutrients. And you'll be filling out your data table as you go along. Finally, for cleanup, Make sure that you wash and dry the spot plates. You have to do this very thoroughly, otherwise you're going to contaminate the plates for the following classes. Any pipettes that you use can be disposed of in the trash. And once that's done, it's time to analyze your results. You should complete a data table that looks something like this. 
with the different molecules in the column and then the different foods tested along here. You should be recording both color change and whether the change indicates a negative or a positive test. For water, again, because it doesn't have any nutrients, we would expect a negative test in all four cases. Once you've got your data table complete, then you will wrap up your analysis and conclusions. As always, you'll write your claim, use evidence, justify your evidence, and then finally reflect on your lab procedure. Were there any sources of error as you were conducting your lab? And what's a new question that you would like to investigate that's related to this topic?